I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Going through our session on Azure Governance, let's go over to the Azure Portal, and we'll go to All Services again, and to the Quick Start Center. And we'll go to set up our Azure environment. And we have covered already these areas around Azure governance, making sure that our permissioning is set up correctly, organizing our resources by our management group, subscription, resource group, resources, coming up with naming standards and resource tagging, as well as having our cost and billing analysis, Azure policies and the security center, which brings us to today. And this is around Azure Monitor. So the Azure monitoring uh, and reporting features take in a lot of areas that we have already seen, but maybe you didn't know that's what you were looking at. For an example of this, let me go to virtual machines. So this is our jump server that we've been dealing with uh, in the Azure Academy. And you see these charts here? This is all part of the Azure monitor. So this is pulling in data for these particular items in this particular time frame. So if I look at data for the last 30 days, there you go. So as you can see, my systems have been off for a lot of that time. Another benefit of the cloud is I don't have to have things running 24 seven. And the bits of data that are here are available across many different kinds of resources. So let me go to storage accounts. Okay, and you can see different charts here in the storage accounts. Or uh, we could look at something like our key vault. You can see that there's different things around the key vault. And all of these different charts and graphs are available at the individual resources. But if we've got a thousand resources and millions of objects, how in the world can we expect to collect all that data and manage it? I mean, that, that in itself is three full-time jobs. Well, we do that through each individual resource being able to plug into diagnostic settings and log analytics. And then we take all this data and we feed it up to the top called the Azure Monitor. Now the Azure Monitor itself covers these three basic areas, monitoring and visualizing your metric data, querying and analytics, and we've seen some of that in our last video in the Security Center, and then setting up alerts and taking actions. Now, in the monitor space, you also have this tutorial and demo, so you can look at things around the Cousteau query language, which we've seen some of that, and we'll look at that again, as well as these other videos uh, from places like Azure Friday or Channel 9 or Visual Studio uh, a YouTube channel, where you can do different things with the monitor, or log analytics, and those things, as well as free courses from other places like Pluralsight, and they got some good resources there, and all of these links go to our documentation. So lots of learning that you can do around what's going on in the monitoring space, as well as checking out this particular space. This is where we can see updates, and we haven't talked about updates in a little while since our fundamental series, but the updates, uh, if you go to update.azure.com, that'll give you all the updates that are going on across all of Azure. These are just the ones that are related to monitoring, okay? So you can look at some of that. So with that high level, let's dig into some of the stuff in Azure Monitor. Now, one of the big things about Azure Monitor is activity logs. So inside activity logs, this is where we collect all of the information about who did what, where, when, with who. Look at this top level item. We can see that there are three incidents that happened eight minutes ago of looking at storage account keys initiated by me. That's a good thing. Okay, so here is a health service update. And then we have that this happened to resource group web demo. And there was some kind of health event action that happened to one of my virtual machines. And it happened to be this particular virtual machine. Going further down here, we see the properties around this particular alert. And it was that there is some unavailability. There was downtime on this particular resource. And the particular thing was that this virtual machine has been down or unavailable for 15 minutes. So we had an alert in the system, this kicked off that said, if this kind of thing happens, I wanna audit or track that this occurs, okay? This is something that came from Azure policy that said that I wanna track this kind of action. So if something like this happens, make a audit of it. So it goes in the activity log. Now that it's in the activity log, 
I can then create a new support request right here, or I can add a activity log alert. Now, activity log alerts are kind of like the Azure playbook that we looked at in the Security Center. This is basically a logic app, and it's going to do something based on this criteria with this condition. Okay. Now, some of these conditions, when you look at them, they will have red stars indicating that there are mandatory items in here, and it will say logic undefined in the condition. And you got to come in here, add the perspective value for what it is that you want to alert for. In this case, it's just that there's a critical alert. The thing is down. We want to create this alert, and then we have to assign an action group and I'll select mine. And an action group is simply a list of email addresses or an email group or something like that. Then you give it some kind of title and you give it some kind of description and then you assign this alert to live inside a resource group because it has to live somewhere because it's basically like kind of a, a logic app. And then you can choose whether or not you want this rule enabled. So for right now, I'm gonna say no and I'm gonna hit create alert rule. That alert rule has been created where does it go? So over here, our next item is alerts. Looking at the alerts, I want to go to my manage alert rules at the top. And the manage alert rules come in two different flavors. And you also have this uh, filtering bar here so you can look at like what subscriptions you want to analyze or what particular resource groups you want to analyze uh, or the signals, which are, is this coming from metrics, log analytics, rules alerts, where's this data coming from? And then whether or not it is enabled or disabled. So here's the one we just created. Now this was disabled, so you can see that. So I can click on this and then I can choose to enable this rule. Disappears from the disabled and it shows up in enabled. So this rule is now active. The reason why I bring up that this is basically a logic app that runs in the cloud is sometimes these conditions will have a cost associated with them. Some of them require deeper kind of information or learning or some way to do a trigger. So that's going to require some extra kind of stuff. And so we have conditions based on that that may or may not cost money just to be aware of that. And that would show right here. Okay, and then you can come in here and edit this if you wanted to, and then edit your uh, action groups or create new action groups and take care of whatever you need to do with that. So I will disable this and I will delete it because I don't need this alert. Okay, and up here we have our manage action groups, and I only have one group right now. And inside here I've got an email address going to myself and that's under the edit details, and it's tied to this particular subscription. So if you wanted to add more email addresses, you can, or other Azure functions, logic apps, web hooks, ITSM, this is where you can integrate it into your ticketing systems. So you can create an alert, put that alert into your ticketing system directly, have an action in the ticketing system that gets kicked off by it. It's gonna do a notification to group X, who's then gonna get a alert on their uh, pager, cell phone, whatever it is that you're using. And then they would come into the portal, take care of XYZ thing, and then close out the ticket. And you can also have it talk to Azure Automation and run a runbook. So you could automate the resolution of issues that come up. Now that could be something like a, uh, a VM is down. Have it go to an Azure Runbook. Azure Runbook would kick off. First thing that it would do is run a script querying the VM. What is the current power state? Power state is turned off. Well, that's not supposed to be that way for this particular system. Turn it on. So you can handle these things in a lot of ways as well as just being notified. Okay, so going back to here and let's get back to some of those pieces of metric data. Now, when looking at it from the Azure monitor, this is all up what's going on with metrics all across Azure. And the first thing you have to do is pick which subscription or subscriptions you want to look at. So I'll do that and I will select every resource group that I have and then I have particular resource types. So I'm gonna pick this particular storage account and I'm going to pick the successful ETE latency and I'm gonna get an average value. I can take this data and I can do some more stuff with it now that I'm looking at it. And I could do this from the storage account just as easily as I could here. So I'm gonna apply a split to this data and say, based on the different kinds of authentication, here's the different ways that uh, the latency has occurred. So we have SAS token or we have account key access. 
Okay, so you can see which one I have used more often. Now you can also create an alert right from here. So I can set a threshold. Now this is where some of the costing comes in because I'm going to have something actively monitoring this for a particular threshold. Logic is currently undefined for that. So I have the red bang here. So I click on my condition and then you can see I have to set a threshold. And so we give you a map of how this thing has functioned. So let's change that to the last week. And now I can look at what is my threshold on average? Well, it was below 100 milliseconds, but this one spiked to 120. If I pick that as my threshold, I just put it in here, 120. And then you can set it for any one of these factors. You could say this is for a account key authentications or it's for all kinds of authentications as well as which particular APIs you were calling where the region was was this the primary region the secondary region so all those kinds of things and you can fill in all of that information if you need to then you specify how many times should this event happen before I issue the alert and now I will also select my action group create my rule make a severity of it and then we will enable that and off we go. There's an example of a alert rule that actually is gonna cost you something. So let's come out of here because I don't need the alert rule. But what I would like to do is I would like to take this particular data and let me get rid of the split here and I wanna add other data. So maybe I'm not just concerned about the latency. Maybe I'm also concerned about how many transactions there were. So now I've got this data color coded so here's my transactions in purple and my successful E to E latency in the blue. Okay, so I can look at both of these pieces of data together and see, oh look, that's when that spike happened. There's what the, the latency was doing. There was a particular transaction. So I got the spike right after this happened. I wonder if there's a correlation and then you can dig into these kind of things further and figure that out. The last piece I'll show you in here is that you can set different kinds of charts and graphs for these views, okay? So you can look at it in any way that helps you the best, as well as pin this data to dashboards. Okay, so here I am in the dashboard and you can see there is a particular metric that I was watching and you can see there was that spike that happened. And so based on whatever this information is, I will have this uh, front and center because I'm concerned about that for a reason. And I can also click on it which would take me right back to the same place. And then I can look at that particular data, look at it over different periods of time, and however it is that I wanna see this particular set of information. Okay, so that's metrics. So let's go back to the monitor and we will look at log analytics. Now we've done some of this in our last video already. So this brings us to the log analytics workspace. And if you click on this button here next to your workspace name, you can choose a different subscription as well as any different workspaces that you have and then apply so that you're looking at that workspace. So you can shift between them here. A Log Analytics workspace, as we've covered in the past, works based on solutions. So you integrate a solution into Log Analytics, which is going to have with it uh, bunches of data and queries that you can use to track what's going on with the information that you ingest. So security here, you can look at uh, these queries that are pre-written for you, okay, or look at updates uh, that are missing on a certain computer. So this particular language here, this is called Cousteau, and that was what was mentioned in the overview section. There's a whole uh, video there on Cousteau for what it is and how you use it. But essentially, it's taking in values from here and then writing them up here with the, in this language. And these over on the Query Explorer side are just uh, uh, queries that have been pre-written for you. So for example, you have uh, this query that I've saved as a favorite. And then once you have this data, you can again generate an alert from it or you can pin this data to your dashboard. Now, when you're looking at these things, every time you open one of these new queries, it gives you another tab. So you don't lose what you're looking at just by going to a different query. Let's see, I've opened up a few here, okay? And each one of these would have those own individual queries that you can look at. So you can start to build some kind of correlation around the data and you can use all these community tools here for more information. We've looked at some of this kind of stuff already. So let's just say here, um, just to show you the uh, IntelliSense. 
so we can say security alerts and then you can join extend count do all these other functions from it in order to gain the specific data that you want or just run the highlighted query and you can get the high level so that's log analytics at a high level which brings us to the service health now this is Azure Service Health, which we covered some in our fundamentals video, so you can go back and watch that. But uh, basically, this is where you pick your subscriptions that you're concerned about, what regions in Azure you're concerned about, and then what services. And as you can see from the chart here, I've got only a few particular things that I'm concerned about at this time. And then based on those, you can create health service alerts, which are going to say if something happens in one of these particular things and it's this kind of issue, then I want to get a notification out to my group, etc., etc. So similar kind of theme as we go through this. The planned maintenance uh, is stuff that's planned to be going on in Azure. Say we're going to upgrade the, the uh, server fleet to a new OS. Yeah, there'd be planned maintenance. Uh, health advisories tell you things that have happened or are going on currently. So there is one that's outside of my current filter, so I can still click on that and see what's going on. Okay, and it's impacting these regions, and it's involving Azure SQL being upgraded. Okay, and it's uh, upgrading the infrastructure for monitoring and alerts to improve stability. So that's what's going on. And what you can do is you can take your phone and take a picture of this, which will open up the item so that you can track it on your mobile if you're concerned with that, or follow the support team at Azure Support or create an online support request if you so inclined. And then you can look at the history of what's gone on and that may or may not be within uh, your particular time frame. A bunch of issues that have happened and been mitigated and some of these were informational like the upgrade that's currently going on. Others required some kind of action and others there were actual incidents and root cause analysis. And the, we post all the root cause analysis information here because this is uh, the public cloud and everyone who's using it has a right to know what's going on even if they're not directly impacted. So we post that stuff all here for you. All right, and then if you've created a service health alert, then you would manage those in this particular view. So let me go back to the Azure Monitor. So that covers the at a very, very high level what is possible with the monitor. Now, we're not done just yet because there's some more questions that have to be answered, like how do we get the data to here in the first place? So that's what these other settings here are for. So because this video has run uh, a little bit long uh, already and it's going to take us at least uh, the same amount of time to get through the rest of the information here because there is a lot more here to go through. I think we're going to cut this one off here and make the monitor a two-parter. And uh, so I hope you've uh, liked this walkthrough through the Azure Monitor and all that it offers. Again, there is a lot of stuff here. So don't forget to like our video, subscribe to the Azure Academy YouTube channel, and you can follow me on Twitter at MS Azure Academy or on LinkedIn by the same handle. So like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Happy learning.